And not only that, I tweaked out my back sleeping wrong a couple months ago. So at this point, I'm just concerned at how old my body is feeling. Welcome back to the Keeping Everything Simple podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Klukas, and it is time for a quarterly review. Looking back on the goals I set at the start of the year and seeing what progress I've made and what changes I need to make going forward. And I hope this video and this podcast also gives you a time to reflect on your own progress and see what you need to adjust so that way you can have the most success by the end of the year. Keeping everything simple, let's jump right in. For the physical health goals, I kind of had about four main ones that I really wanted to hit this year. And let's go over those again real quick. So I wanted to go to the gym about three to four times consistently throughout the week. I wanted to go for at minimum like, you know, 30, 45 minutes. The second goal was I wanted to drop my weight range down to the 170, 175 kind of ballpark again. That's going back to what I used to weigh in high school. I want to improve my flexibility just for general health purposes. And I wanted to improve my diet. Because, you know, as they say, abs are kind of made in the kitchen. And even though it's very superficial, I would kind of like abs. Not going to lie. What's the current progress on my physical health goals? Honestly, not that bad. So for the weight range, trying to get down to 170, 175, I have finally, finally broken past the 190 pound barrier. And now I average about 186 to 188 pounds. And I am so happy with that. Because breaking past 190 honestly was taking so long, and we'll get to that in a little bit later. I am doing pretty good on the consistency front, so I am hitting the gym about three to four times a week on average. There will be some weeks where I hit it only two days, but then I will up it to four the next week. So that way, again, three to four days on average. Not bad. Now, the timing, though, in the gym still does vary because it depends on what type of workout I'm doing. If I'm doing weightlifting or something more cardio based like jump rope or a hit workout. But I am still hitting that 30 to 45 minutes on average for the duration in which I'm actually spending time in the gym physically working out and, you know, getting absolutely massive. As for flexibility, that actually has been very consistent as well. I try to stretch about every single day, right when I wake up or right before I go to bed. I'm trying to stretch for at least three to five minutes because my old man knees, let me just, hold up, let me just. These bad boys are super weak and it's not good. Like it's not good at all. And not only that, I tweaked out my back sleeping wrong a couple months ago. So at this point, I'm just concerned at how old my body is feeling and how bad my joints are getting. So the fact that I am stretching and it is helping my knees and my back, so important. And I'm going to keep that one up because my old man self in the future is probably going to look back on this and say, hey, thank you for doing that. So that one's staying on there. And then as for my diet, so my girlfriend and I still do HelloFresh meals, which has been very good for us in terms of, you know, balance and nutrition and we try to limit the amount of times we're eating out every single week so again good balance i have added fish oil so getting my omega-3s into my you know daily multivitamins and daily vitamin d allergy medicine i don't think that quite counts as vitamins but it isn't important for me so i can you know kind of breathe but (laughs) but just as a whole The vitamin balance and diet has been improving so that way I can ensure that I'm getting the nutrients I need. The fish oil was added so that way for my brain health, the omega-3 fatty acids is getting in there. And I kind of blame Ali Abdal for me thinking about that where I kind of want to get a height subscription for my brain health. But that might be a question for my future self later on down the line. Because for right now, I'm just glad I'm taking the daily multivitamin. That's good. Moving on to mental health, because that's equally as important as your physical health, because your mind makes a reality. So I had three goals in this category. One was to do a daily gratitude and daily review journal every single day. You know, kind of what daily means. Go me. And up my count or do counseling at least once a month. And then also do a mindfulness meditation every single day. So here's my progress check on that. The daily gratitude journaling, actually, I have been super consistent on, which has been so, so nice, especially when things have gotten rough, where 
a week's been bad or maybe a day just hasn't gone the way I wanted it to. The ability to really sit down and say, okay, here are three things that I am grateful for has been super helpful. And I am very glad and grateful that I've kept that one up. Daily review has been a bit less consistent and I'm struggling with that one, but I'm trying to level it up where it really just needs to be as simple as one to two sentences, what I feel, what I'm thinking and how the day kind of went. That's it. That's all I need. And I'm still really bad at that. So I'm, I'm working on that one. Counseling, actually, I have up my personal counseling sessions to two times a month, which has been very good because I want to get better as an individual and counseling has helped me make better understanding of my past, clarify my future a bit, and be more present in who I want to be today, and also improve my communication because honestly, I suck at communicating clearly and effectively, and my emotional intelligence has improved a lot since I've started counseling some odd years ago. I think it was four years ago now, but it still obviously needs to be worked on, and I continue to keep working on it, and I want to keep working on it. So counseling two times a month which is good and then the final thing being the mindfulness meditation i still meditate every single day before i go to bed every single night not day every single night before i go to bed i will meditate and that's been nice to one be part of my nighttime routine so i fall asleep pretty much directly after which is phenomenal but then i haven't made time to do that nothingness meditation so taking like one to five minutes, whatever it wants to be, and literally just sit there, do nothing, try to think of nothing, and just exist. That one still a work in progress, so I got to make time for that. But beyond that, that's my current progress check for mental health goals, which has been overall going pretty well. For my relationship goals, there were four main ones that I had. So the first was the two, two, two date planning. So every two weeks, have a date night, every two months, have a date weekend. And it hasn't been two years. So that every two years have a date week doesn't quite fit. And then from there also setting and following through on my intentions has been very important for that goal or for another goal that I have. And then there is the texting my friends weekly and calling them or texting my friends biweekly and calling them every other month. And finally, hosting my family for a family get together at least once a month. So those are the four main goals. Progress check. So the 222 date planning actually has been bumped up to like, we're just going to do dates every single week, me and my partner, because honestly, we're not married yet. We don't have kids. And so the ability and time to actually spend on those dates has been well within our control. So taking time to actually have a date night every single week has been very enjoyable for us. And I'm super happy that we've been doing it that way. As for the following and setting my intentions, I've redone or I've taken back up an old habit, an old practice that my counselor had originally suggested, which was setting an alarm for my intention of the day and literally just reminding myself, what did I want to do that day? What intention did I have that day? And that's been very helpful because I still struggle with following through on what I say. And that's not exactly a very good mix when I want to build deep, meaningful relationships. And then with my friends, the texting them bi-weekly, I'm probably going to have to set an alarm for that too. I talked about that, I think, in the past, and I just think I need to bite the bullet and do that and just make it easy on myself so I remind myself to do so. Calling them has been hit or miss because adult schedules are a thing and they are annoying. So trying to actually coordinate when we have time to make a call should be a lot easier. It should be. I feel like it should be, but it is what it is. So going to work on that one and just continue, maybe set another alarm for those two of, hey, remind yourself to call this person or at least try to call them and talk on the phone. And then as for family game nights or actually hosting my family once a month, that has been up to about two to three times a month, which actually has been very fun especially since my younger brother got a movie pass, and so movies are a lot more frequent of a thing, saw the Super Mario movie. Let me know down below what your thoughts were on it. I thought it was a little bit rushed, but I won't deny I did enjoy the movie. I thought it was pretty good. That's just my opinion on it. Don't hate me for that. So that's where I'm at with my relationships. Moving on to the faith goals I had for the year. So I wanted to find or start a kind of Bible study, weekly Bible study, or a daily devotion and read or work through it. I want to continue to discuss and listen to sermons from my girlfriend's church with her. And then also I want to get involved around other communities around faith. So here's my progress check on those. The daily devotional has actually been very fun. 
and very meaningful. So my girlfriend actually did go out of her way and got me the Prayers and Promises for Men, which is a daily devotional. And then I also went through and I downloaded a daily Bible devotional app as well. So I get a morning and night devotional. So along with some Bible humor and Bible trivia, and that's also been a nice little part of my routine. Discussing the sermons has continued, and that one hasn't really posed any issues. So me and my girlfriend continue to listen to the weekly sermons from her church and talk about them, which I've found to be very helpful because I have honestly just continually a lot of inner questions and conflict with my faith and how I kind of manifest in this world. And the ability to talk about it is super helpful. So I also then ended up joining her young adults group from her church. So again, to be around other people in our age group and do the same thing, talk about the sermons, talk about other lessons, and really just dive into faith and meaning. I also actually did get involved with my old community of the Episcopal Church and did an event with them over the first quarter of the year. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. For my financial goals, I had three main ones. I wanted to save about 30% of my income every single month. I wanted to rebuild that cash safety net. So again, that non-negotiable of three to six months, whatever it is on your comfortable risk tolerance. And then I want to increase my income by 25% by the end of the year. Here's my progress check on that. The actually saving 30% of my income, I'm gonna admit has been difficult mainly because I kind of pay like 60% of my monthly income towards rent. I know if Andre Jick or Graham Stephan were here, they'd be probably disappointed in me, but hey, hey, to be fair, I am trying to cut costs and lower some expenses, so it's just a work in progress, but it's not exactly the most conducive to saving the 30%, but I'm working on it. The rebuilding the safety net also is a work in progress where I, because I am putting the money away, it is slowly growing. And so I just need to continue that trend to rebuild that safety net for whatever comes in the future, because that's going to be super, super important for security. And then increasing my income overall by 25%, that one's going to be a little bit harder. And obviously that's because I need to find some way to either make more money online, make another business or be able to better negotiate a salary raise and earn more that way. So just as a whole, that one I know is going to take a little bit more time because I want to integrate it into my life a bit more smoothly and not throw everything out of balance by trying to just chase after some money. So work in progress. I got four goals for the career and entrepreneurship category of my life. So the first one is continuing to post one video a week, five shorts a week, or five TikToks, whatever you want to call it, and five pieces of static content a week. I'm gonna clump that all into one. I have a big stretch goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I am still pushing for that. I'm gonna try. The next one then is do one speaking event a quarter, and then finally creating a bi-weekly email newsletter. Here's the progress check. I am still on an upload streak and I am so, so happy about that, that I haven't actually missed an upload per week since I started doing this about a year ago. And I take a lot of pride in that. The shorts haven't been as consistent where I have stints where I post them consistently throughout every single weekday. I had a little bit here like a month or two ago where I tried to post two every single day. And the problem was the content wasn't that good. And then for static content, I've started to bring that back and it has gone a bit better when I'm just throwing my thoughts out there and things I'm learning from articles, books, and podcasts. So the balance there is a bit wonky, but I'm just really happy that I've had and maintained a streak of long form content for about this past year. So happy with that. The 10K subscribers, as I said, that's a stretch goal and I'm just gonna have to keep chugging along and working towards that. So we're making it, I think. I have, I have faith in that. As for one speaking event a quarter, so as I talked about earlier, getting in touch with the Episcopal Diocese again, I actually did a kind of speaking event because there was a retreat in the first quarter this year that was a mindfulness and meditation retreat, and I hosted a breathwork session for them, and I got to talk about breathwork and meditative practices during that time, which was super, super fun and very fulfilling, and I'm going to count that as my speaking event, but 
this coming quarter, what I really want to do is try to get into some local schools, maybe community colleges in my local community, and do some speaking events for some classes or just for the student body and try to build that as my base and foundation. As for the bi-weekly newsletter, I honestly kind of just have to bite the bullet on that because I don't have a lot of confidence in my ability as a writer that can make compelling, you know, articles and emails. So I need to work on my copy and my ability to actually write meaningful content that you guys find value in. So I just need to start doing that and it's going to be messy. It's going to be bad. And I just have to kind of roll with it in the beginning. So that one's obviously a work in progress, but I will keep you guys posted on that one. The final category of goals is my personal goals. And okay, there's a lot here because it's for personal development and personal fulfillment, things that I just want to do because I want to do them. Practicing Spanish. I am half Guatemalan. I should know how to speak Spanish fluently. I believe so anyways, because I want to be able to communicate with my extended family. That's my motivation. So then read one book a month at minimum and actually spend time on my hobbies. Things like drawing, painting, singing, dancing, making music, photography, whatever it is. Just focus on my hobbies at some point. Here's the progress check. For Spanish, I actually have been making progress. So I am using Duolingo not sponsored, but I have been making progress on that, but it has been slow going because on the days in which I work, I have a bad habit of just trying to make sure that my daily streak is maintained. So I'll go to one of the earlier lessons, which only takes me like a minute to finish and then just go through that and call it good. So I'm trying to stop that habit and focus on the current lesson I'm on all the way at the very bottom. So I am making progress. So that's a work in progress there, but I am getting better. I think, I hope, I really, really hope. As for books, because of my current job, I work long shifts, like 12 hour shifts. And that's a lot of time to actually listen to books as well. So I've kind of changed it and leveled up a little bit to the reading books has now become reading and listening to books. And that's been so, so nice. I'm not even gonna lie about that because when I'm listening to books, it's like one and a half, two, three times speed, just zooming through them where I can listen to them a couple of times over to really get the content. But then I get to go back later on and read them physically as well. It just kind of makes the brain work in a different way for me. And that's been so, so nice. So I got a couple of books I've actually gotten through, which I'll get to in a minute. As for the hobbies, that's where I need the most work in this personal goal. I haven't actually taken time to sit down and draw or paint or even pick up my ukulele or my little miniature keyboard. I need to do that because those are some of the things that I find so fun and have always found so fun. And I want to make sure I am making time for them because it's important to me. So that's where I need the most work. So I have my notes here and I'm going to go through the books that I have read so far and listened to so far this year. So I have The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f How to Win Friends and Influence People, The Miracle Morning. That one's been important for me. Deep Work, The Hundred Million Dollar Offer, The Rise of Dragons, Kings, and Sorcerers, Book One, and finally, Think and Grow Rich. I will also have affiliate links to all these books in the description. And because they're affiliate links, if you do choose to click on them, purchase the books through there, you will support this channel, which honestly, will mean so much and is very helpful so I can continue to do things like this. But those books have been so fun to read. I've actually listened to some of them a couple of times over. So Deep Work, I listened to, I think, two or three times. How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think I listened to it twice. $100 million offer. I'm currently trying to read that again just so I can have a better understanding of how to make compelling courses and compelling products that are actually beneficial for you guys. And they have been just so helpful to actually learn and distill information in a way that I previously wouldn't have thought of. So I recommend those books. And again, if you use any links down below, they are affiliates. So I do benefit monetarily from it, but I just hope that you find those books as helpful as I do. Those are my goals that I've been working on since the beginning of this year. And as you can obviously see, 
not all of them have been going according to plan. Like the Spanish. I really want to speak Spanish fluently at some point in my lifetime, and I haven't been pushing myself to do so in a way that's really pushing that needle forward or the email newsletter i just need to start but there has been other progress like i'm super happy that my weight's going down my health is going up my flexibility actually reading these books that i find to be super super interesting it's this up and down momentum that makes goals and makes pursuing them so fun for me. It's an adventure. It's part of, if you want to consider it this, it's the side quest that I'm trying to complete on the wall, along the way on the main quest to lead a fulfilling life that actually impacts those around me in a positive way and makes me happy. What are your goals that you've been making progress on so far this year? Comment down below because I really want to know how you guys are spending your first quarter and what you intend to do for the second quarter of the year. Keep everything simple. Have an amazing day, you amazing people. Be sure to check out my first podcast episode ever. I was super happy to do that and that was a lot of fun and I'm going to do more and I will see you all in another video.